Today is June 29th, Tuesday, June 29th. I'm still working from home. It is my lunch hour, so I'm going to try to do a little bit of cleaning up around the kitchen and I'm going to put some beets in the oven to roast them so that I can pickle them and I'm gonna walk you through that process. I love pickled beets. I especially love pickled eggs, so I'm gonna hard boil some eggs and throw them in there as well. Some of the beets came from our CSA share, so from a local farm called One Straw Farm, and then I'm supplementing some with some beets that I bought from just a roadside farm stand the other day. I had refrigerator beets in here. That's what I'm making, refrigerator beets. I'm not going to be water bathing anything. I'm not going to be boiling anything. I'm just going to be making refrigerator pickled beets that will last for, the internet says six weeks. I think you could go longer. They probably won't even last six weeks in my house because I'll be eating them so rapidly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my beets and I'm gonna scrub them up really well in the sink. I'm also going to chop off any of the remaining stems that are hanging on. And if it has like a very long root tail, I'll probably just snip that a little bit so that when I'm roasting them in the foil, they'll just sit a little bit better. And then all you do after you've washed them is just very loosely wrap them in individual pieces of foil. I'm gonna take this and just rip it. Beets, even when they're not cooked, and I'm just sitting here chopping up the little roots, they will stain. So here's like a little root tail or a rat tail, if you will, that I cut and I'm just rubbing it on my palm and as you can see, it stains. So I'm wearing black because if it does get on me, no one will ever be able to tell. Um, but if you are wearing something nicer, I would suggest an apron. Some of these are bigger than others and that's okay. You just have to make sure that you check on them. You'll know that they're done when you can very easily pierce the beat and pull out whatever you're using to pierce it with. You can use a knife, you can use a skewer. So you have to check them kind of intermittently if you are using different sizes, which most of the time you are if you're getting them from a farm. You know, these are very small, so I'm thinking they'll take maybe 30 minutes or so. Sometimes you can get beets that are this big and those will probably take closer to an hour. Once you roast them and they're soft and cooked fully through, we're gonna let them cool for a while and then the skins should just peel right off and then we can get to slicing them and adding them to the pickling mixture. I also need to take off these nails. I mean, these are my nails. I say take them off, but I need to take off the polish. I have a dip polish manicure on right now, which is not something that I often do. I, I think the last time I did it was two and a half years ago, probably. And I've had them on for a month and they still look amazing. They look great. No chipping, no cracks or anything. They've grown out a bunch, but I'm taking pottery classes and I had my first class last week. And when I sat down, I was like, shit. I remember why I always had short nails when I was in art school a couple of years ago when I had them on and I refused to go have them taken off. I asked for methods of removal on Instagram and someone sent me one that sounds so wild and wacky and totally harebrained, but it worked. I have to show you, it sounds bizarre. It's a very safe and non-invasive way of removing it because I don't wanna grind down my natural nail. I hate when they do that. I really think it's so damaging and I know that it's fast and efficient for them, but I would rather spend the time getting it off the right way so that my nails health is preserved. So I need to work on that and I thought that would be a fun thing to show you because it's so weird. Since the last time I would have vlogged, my diet has changed significantly for medical reasons. All of this to say that I am now gluten-free, 100% gluten-free, and I'm in the process of finding things that I like and finding out the things that I don't really like when it comes to pasta alternatives, gluten-free breads, stuff like that. So I'm making myself a half of a sandwich right now. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a tomato sandwich. This is one that I picked from our garden. This was the first Cherokee tomato I got off of our tree, no, off of our plant this year. And it's nice and small and perfect for the itty bitty gluten-free bread that I have. That's what I've learned. Gluten-free bread is usually very tiny. I'm gonna try a little wedge 
and I always salt my tomatoes. It just enhances the experience. Mmm, so good. Oh my gosh, I love an heirloom tomato variety. I really like a lot of the Canyon Bakehouse varietals. They make a cinnamon raisin bread that is so good. I love it dearly, but this is just a piece of the country white. Look how tiny it is. My favorite food in the world is probably a tomato sandwich or a BLT. And I really love mayonnaise, so I've liberally mayonnaised my bread. And I'm gonna lightly salt my tomato slices. And because I am the classy gal that I am, I'm going to have a slice of white American cheese on the side. And I'm also going to have a peach from a local, actually that local farm stand I was talking about a little bit ago. There is nothing better than a summer peach. It's just my favorite fruit. All of my beets are out of the oven. I've also gone ahead and prepped my pickling mixture. So in here I have a cup of apple cider vinegar, a cup of water, a third of a cup of granulated sugar, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and then a quarter teaspoon of ground mustard. I realize I've had my camera on. I haven't even showed you. Hi. How you doing, bud? You look so tiny all curled up like that. Yeah, give you good scratches. Give you good scratches. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. I also really like to use golden beets. So these are traditional purple beets, but golden beets are a little bit more sweet. If you find that you don't really like the rich dirt taste as much, I would suggest maybe trying a golden beet, maybe mix it in with some purple. That's usually what I do. They'll all look purple at the end, but there is a little bit of a taste difference. And I'm just gonna slice them nice and thin, maybe like a quarter inch or so. And you could totally eat them now. I would sprinkle maybe a little bit of salt on there. They're nice and sweet when they're like this. And then I just plop them in. Also, look how beautiful that is. Here is our jar of beautiful beets. All right, so my pickling mixture has simmered. I'm gonna let it cool down for a few minutes, pour what I can fit into this jar, seal the jar up and let it sit on the counter over here for about 24 hours and then I'll refrigerate them tomorrow. Okay, while my pickling solution is cooling, I'm gonna work on my nails. So I showed you what they looked like a few minutes ago. They were shiny and glossy. I used Barclay's nail grinder to just kind of do this very lightly. I really can't even feel that. All over the shiny bits of my nails. Now I have a gallon Ziploc bag with a folded up paper towel and some 100% acetone ultra powerful cutex. This stuff is my favorite because while it is really powerful, it even says here for hard to remove glitter gel and dark colored nail polish, it doesn't dry me out quite as much as some other acetones. So I've poured some of that in here. It's saturated the napkin, which is what you want. You're gonna take a bowl of really hot water from your tap. Sometimes I have to change out the water and get it hot again. I'm gonna put my hand like a claw essentially, and I'm gonna make this motion in the water on this napkin. I know it sounds really weird, so I'm submerging that. Be careful that you don't have too much water in there. Your hands aren't getting wet, but the, the warmth from the water combined with the friction that you're creating by rubbing your nails back and forth like this is magic. 
essentially I have my hand pressed to the bottom of this bag and I'm just doing this, like opening and closing my hand so that my nails are pressing against the bottom of the bowl against the acetone soaked napkin. You know, it's gonna take a while. You're gonna be here a while. So hydrate, eat something, grab your book, catch up on Instagram. It sure beats going to the salon and I have to have these off for tonight or I will not be able to make any sort of pottery. Okay, so I've been doing it just for a couple of minutes and you can already see how my, my real nail is being exposed. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna show you the final result. Catch you in a bit. You know, my cuticles and my nail beds are quite dry, so I'll need to do some hydrating treatments, but it is a start and it feels good to have, be able to like feel things with my fingertips again. I have changed into some really attractive cargo pants and I'm gonna go outside and weed our front flower bed. My workday is over, it's 4.30. I need to be at class at 6.30. And because it's such a long class, it's three hours, it really just takes up my whole evening. So I wanna get some of my stuff done while it's still light outside. Oh, my beets. So here's our finished product. They look beautiful. And I have just let it sit on the counter here. Like I said, I'm gonna let this sit for about 24 hours. Um, don't be alarmed if this doesn't suction. Like I said, we're not pressure canning, we're not water bathing, we're just doing refrigerator pickling. So I'm looking forward to eating these within the next few days. I was starting to make some peach jam and totally forgot to tell you anything that I was doing. So here I'm showing you this recipe for sage peach jam. I weighed my peaches. I had about three pounds, probably three pounds on the dot once I removed the pits. And I was, I think I was telling you about this Better Homes and Garden uh, preserving magazine that I bought at CVS the other day. It was 11 or 12.99, but it has some really fun and interesting recipes in here specifically for summertime fruits and vegetables. So I thought that was nice. I've since purchased a better canning book, but that's what we're doing here, making some jam. So I didn't read the recipe correctly already. It calls for liquid fruit pectin that comes in like a little pouch. All I had was the Sure Gel original, which is like the powdered pectin. I'm gonna make it work. Yep. There are a lot of rules and not laws, but there's like an entire canning board that tells you safety regulations surrounding canning of things. Cause like that's how botulism, you know, became a, a thing. Inside the Sure Gel pectin packet, there are instructions on how to do freezer jams and cook jams and whatnot. I am not doing freezer. I'm going to actually can them because I don't have a lot of freezer space and that's all there is to it. Part of the instructions stuck to the thing so I need to put it through this little hole so I can read what I'm doing. Nothing with me is easy or goes to plan. Also, this is just regular peach jam. I'm still going to add sage because I have so much sage and I want to use it up and I think that's going to be really tasty together. <gasps> I caught it. Thought you cut it with your boots for a second. going to sterilize my jars. I'm using half pint jars. I'm going to remove the rings and I'm just going to sterilize the lid and the actual jar itself. These are brand new and they smell horrific. I think this is going to make about seven half pints. So that's what I will sanitize. I have my diced peaches and the bundle of sage here in a saucepan. I'm pouring in one entire package of Sure Gel fruit pectin, and I'm gonna turn this and get it going to a boil. I also have my jars sanitizing here. So if it continues to boil while you're stirring, that's how you know you have a full rolling boil. So now I'm gonna add my sugar very carefully. I know this seems like a lot, it is a lot. 
I'm bringing this back up to a full boil. It'll boil for a minute. I'm gonna continue to stir it, take it off the heat. If you find that it gets really foamy, you can skim that top layer off. So I'm just leaving that water there. I know if the water was too high. No, it needs to be covered. Do you want the tongs to get the lids? Um, the magnetic thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the box. So I'm filling it and I'm leaving a quarter inch of headspace. Oh, you couldn't see any of that. I'm the worst. I'm so sorry. Okay, well, I'll do better next time. And I'm just gonna top them off a little. I use the largest spoon known to man. We've done that and now you lower this very carefully into the water. Crank that bitch up, boil it for 10 minutes. And then you have jam. Hi, make a jam. Please. Yeah, please. Okay, jams are done. I will let these sit here for about 24 hours and then put them in the pantry. I will put one in the refrigerator though. Hey, sleepy boy. Hey, sleepy boy. Okay, going for round two. We're making corn relish. In this bowl, I have half a cup of chopped onion and a one and a half cups of chopped celery. And I'm going to add some sweet peppers to this. Here is the workings of a corn relish. I did not really show you how I made it, but it's in that book that I showed you earlier. And I've already got all my jars ready to go because that was the mistake I made the last time. So I'm gonna let this simmer for about 25 minutes. We've got freshly shucked corn, onion, peppers, celery, and then seasonings. This is our golden, sun gold. That's what they're called. Sun gold cherry tomato harvest. I need to find something fun to do with these. Mike grilled up some corn, some squash and zucchini. Oh my God, that thing is huge, honey. I'm glad you're impressed, impressed by the size. size of your meat. That is a hunk of steak. So I'll eat this, what are you gonna have? Listen, if you can eat that whole thing, <laughs> I I'll, I'll let you do it because I'll be very impressed. I would be on the toilet again. <laughs> if you cannot tell, I'm having a little bit of a hair crisis. I.e. I've reached the point where I don't want this hair anymore. That's a story for another day. I have so much hair. I don't think people understand how much there is. I think what I wanted to say was, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. I know that this content was quite different from what you're used to seeing on our channel. I just want to assure you that this channel is not turning into my wannabe homesteading channel, but it has always been a goal of mine to have a homestead and until I can have more land, I'm working on this little urban homestead here and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't and canning and preserving food is a big part of that because I'm growing things and I'm also a member of a CSA farm share. Let me know what you thought of this kind of content. I'm not a professional canner. I used to do it many, many years ago and then I stepped away from it and now I'm back and I'm into it more than ever. And I've been using a few good resources for my urban gardening adventures. This I've talked about in a favorites video. It's called The First Time Gardener Growing Vegetables. It's by Jessica Soward, Sowards rather, and she's the owner of Roots and Refuge Farm, which is a wonderful YouTube channel that I love and I've talked about before. Their farm recently moved from Arkansas to South Carolina. So if you wanna follow along on that journey, also this book is just great, even if you're not a first time gardener. I've talked about that preservation magazine. That's great for like summertime fruits and vegetables, 
but it doesn't really go beyond very basic surface level stuff. So I did go ahead and purchase the ball canning Bible, essentially. It is all about preserving and canning all different foods. Uh, it talks about pressure canning versus water bath canning, refrigerator, pickles, stuff like that. So um, yeah, let me know if you wanna see anything else more specific. I'm happy to bring you along on that journey, but rest assured that this is still very much a uh, Caitlin and Danielle lifestyle, beauty, entertainment, just a general entertainment uh, channel with some real life stuff sprinkled in sometimes. Anyhow, that completes this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so you never miss out on our new videos. Uh, Caitlin and I do have a couple sponsored videos coming up, which you know we don't do very often and we're quite selective with. So be on the lookout for those. We appreciate any engagement you give, you give us. Uh, it, it really does help, honestly. Every like, every share, every comment, every subscription, it's just all very helpful for our channel. I hope you all are having a great summer and if you have any content requests, you can leave them in a comment below. We're always looking for new ideas. So I think that's everything. I or we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye bye everybody. <laughs> Look at him. Boop, boop, boop.